In this um, list we've got the NGTH on the end of these words and then down here we've got the S as making the Z sound. So we've got length, strength, then we've got result, clumsy, refuse or refuse, confuse, propose, suppose, surprise and present. So S can quite often make the Z sound. In fact, it makes the Z sound more than it makes a S sound. So let's have a look at what else we've got in these words. Um, you know we're going to use a C before an L for the cut sound. We've got the prefix, prefix um, re here, con and pro here, and sup here. So, so you've got an R control vowel there and pre there. Um, and this E sometimes is making the previous vowel make its long sound. So just be aware of that happening as well. Okay, let's go through and look at the, what these words mean. So um, length means the uh, measurement from end to end. It can be in distance or it can be in time. So it's a measurement. Um, strength is a quality of being strong. Um, a result is the outcome of something. Um, clumsy means someone's quite awkward. Now you could say this two ways. You could say this refuse or refuse. So if you refuse something, you're saying no to something. But if it's refuse, it means it's rubbish. You're talking about rubbish. Um, confuse means that um, you're perplexed or you don't know, you can't understand something. This one could be um, where you propose something, you're suggesting something, um, or it could be um, in this picture as it's shown, uh, an offer um, for someone to marry you. Suppose <coughs> is um, where you assume something. A surprise is a shock, and a present is a gift, or you may be present, which means um, something is happening in the present. Um, which means now, it's happening now. In this list we're just revising the NGTH at the end of length and strength. It's quite a difficult combination of letters. Then we've got the S saying Z in result, clumsy, refuse or refuse, um, confuse, propose, suppose, surprise and present. So the letter S actually says Z more than it says S. It does that about 70% of the time, the letter S will say Z. Now, we talked about the word meanings yesterday, so I don't need to go through them again with you today. So you just have to work through and find the meaning of each of those words and write the words into the spaces. And then we're asking you to apply that knowledge to read and fill in the gap with the list word down here. <clears throat> now this... Um, is about the prefix um, change rule that we've started talking about in this um, level S. So what you're going to see is that um, the prefix sub may change when combined with the root word to make it easier to say. So we're allowed to change the last letter of the prefix to match the first letter of the root word. So rather than saying subpose, which is quite difficult to say, we can change that B to match the first letter of pose, so it would be suppose. There's not an awful lot of prefixes, but we, because of the prefix change rule, um, we know that we have the right to change these letters, which uh, means that um, they're easier to say. So summarize, no, that sounds awkward, so we're allowed to change the B to match the first letter of the root, so it'd be summarize. So do be aware of that as you're writing the new words uh, you'd have support, supply, suffer, summon, and suffix. Now down here you have to use a sentence to show the two different meanings of the word. My words today are length, strength, result, clumsy, refuse, confuse, propose, suppose, surprise, and present. Now, in this section, you have to form comparatives or superlatives. So, comparatives mean more, and we usually add ER, and superlatives mean the most of something, and to form a superlative, we commonly add EST. 
But if you have a word ending in Y and there's a consonant before it, so you have consonant Y at the end of the word, you're allowed to change the Y to an I before you add the ER and the EST. So just be aware of that as you're finishing that. Now write the list word extension to match the meaning. To make longer, you've got to find the word here that would um, form the base of that, and you're going to add EN to them. Now here, when you're creating an adverb, we've given you this hint um, quite frequently, is we often add LY to the end of a word to form the adverb. Then we want you to use these adverbs to describe verbs in a sentence that you're going to write down the bottom. This is today's activities is adverbials of time. So adverbs of time tell us when an action happened, how long it may have gone for and how often it may occur. So we use at uh, with clock times, religious festivals, meal times, specific periods. For example, at nine o'clock, at Christmas, at lunch, at the moment. We use in for um, seasons, years and centuries, months, part of the day, in the night. So we could have in autumn, in 2017, in February, in the 18th century, in the evening. We tend to use on with days apart and parts of a day, for special days and for dates. So on Wednesday, on Thursday morning, on my birthday, on the 1st of January. For, we tend to use to say how long something has happened. So it could be, for example, he is in Sydney for a week. It tells us how long. Since is used to say when something started to happen. I have been learning Indonesian since I was six years old. He has wanted a pet dog since last year. My auntie has worked at the hospital since she finished her degree. Now there are a lot of other words that we can use too um, that are adverbs of time. So some of them are yesterday, today, tomorrow, now, here, this, as in week, this week, um, these, as in days, next, as in month, every, as in year, last, night, and during. So what you have to do is read these sentences and you'll quite naturally work out what the um, correct word be should be. Um, to finish off each of these sentences. But if you get stuck, use these words here and the suggestions here might help you. And there's a whole pile of other words down the bottom here. Don't forget to use them as well. They're commonly used as well. So I went to the movies. It says you've already done it, so it was probably yesterday. I went to the movies yesterday. Yes, that sounds right.